for an upcoming project, I need a differential probe that can handle high voltages. A cheap differential probe isn't too expensive, but the specs don't meet my requirements. And the ones which do start to get really expensive really fast. Join me as we go down the DIY route. There's not much to a differential probe, so how hard can it be, right? I'm Mark Harris, one of Altium's industry expert consultants. Before we dive into the design, what is a differential probe and why do you need one? Your regular oscilloscope probe is single-ended. It probes a signal referenced to the earth ground in the scope. The probe ground lead or spring is referenced to ground and bad things could happen if you connect it to something that isn't ground. If you're working on a project and need to measure a voltage differential between two points, you need a differential probe. A differential probe will take the two inputs, use a differential amplifier to figure out the difference between them, and then output a ground reference signal that your oscilloscope can easily use. A differential probe is pretty simple. It's just a couple of schematic blocks you're probably already familiar with stuck together. My goal is to have 1200 volts input and around 250 megahertz of bandwidth. There's also a blog post for this project as well as the Altium designer files for the differential probe linked in the video description. Let's take a look at the schematic in Altium designer. The first thing we need is a voltage divider. The input voltage is going to be far higher than we could feed to any differential amplifier. The voltage divider also provides voltage isolation. Each of these components provides a 300 volt gap, making it so the signal cannot just arc across and kill everything, including the user. The output from the voltage divider goes through a simple RC filter, then into a buffer amplifier. As this is a differential probe, We'll mirror this whole signal chain to create the second input. The output from the two buffer amplifiers then goes to the inputs of another operational amplifier, which will output the difference between the two signals. This is the signal which goes to the oscilloscope. I'm using Analog Devices ADA4817 amplifiers as they were the highest performance option in stock at the time of design. These amplifiers run on a dual supply, plus and minus 4.8 volts, which is supplied from the power board we built in my last project. For the board layout, I'm going to treat this as a high-speed design, following high-speed design practices. The board is four layers, with two inner layers being ground planes to ensure there is an adjacent return path for signals on the outer layers. The signal chain runs diagonally across the board. This technique is often used in fiber reinforced dielectric materials to ensure the signal moves over identical amounts of fiberglass and epoxy substrate, and therefore arrives at the ADC with identical timing and dissipation. I probably don't need to go to these extremes, but I'm having fun. I'm also length matching the two inputs so the signals get to the buffer amps and into the differential amplifier at the same time. The picoseconds of difference between unmatched traces won't make a difference, but I like to overdo things wherever possible. For the input to the board, I'm using SMA connectors with a range of resistor pads that allow the shield of the SMA cable to be isolated, directly connect to the board, ground, or connected to the board ground through a capacitor. This gives a few options to deal with the shield termination depending on the use case. The output of the board is a BNC connector for connection to the oscilloscope. Now with a quick bit of hand assembly.
we have a board ready for testing. Hmm. My specs might have been a little bit of a mistake. You see, my function generator maxes out at 10 volts, which is less than 1% of maximum voltage the input's designed for. It also has rise and fall times of 20 nanoseconds, which is not exactly going to allow us to see how well the system responds to high speed signals. Maybe we can hack something together from my parts bin to resolve both of those issues. So this hatchet job of a circuit is a H-bridge controller driving two MOSFETs to drive the gate of a third MOSFET. The input will come from my function generator and the H-bridge will ensure the gate of the final MOSFET will be switched on and off as fast as possible. I can then switch series connected to outputs from my lab supply to give me a falling edge that is nearly as fast as my 350 megahertz oscilloscope can measure. On my oscilloscope, I'm seeing a nice fast falling edge, but all I'm seeing on the output of the voltage divider is a signal that has absolutely no relation to the input signal. After way too much time poking at this circuit, running simulations, trying to understand what I'm seeing, it finally dawned on me that I'm not actually measuring a signal. I'm measuring electromagnetic emissions from the FET board. Funnily enough, pushing a relatively fast edge at a moderate voltage over something that is not a transmission line creates a rather large amount of radiated energy. Who would have thought so much so that I can measure on the oscilloscope with even a ground spring touching the probe tip to make an inductive loop. With a ground lead hook to the probe tip, wow, that's a lot of voltage getting picked up. Well, scratch that idea. I can't create the voltage I need, at least in a lab environment, to put the full board to a test. Do we really need to though, is the question. Perhaps I can verify the voltage divider is working as expected and then separately verify the amplifier stages. By breaking up the problem, I can keep the voltages within a reasonable range for my test equipment. If I remove the resistor that forms the RC input filter to the buffer amps, I can connect my function generator directly to the input stages of the op amp. Now I only need a 2.4 volt peak to peak signal, which is much more manageable. You can dial in a one megahertz square wave on the function generator and see how the output looks. Hey, that signal rings a bell, or rather rings like a bell. Perhaps I should add a 50 ohm series resistor into the circuit before I send the signal off into 50 ohms coax. That looks a lot better, but there's still a lot of ghost signal there. Lots of fuzzy traces in the scope is triggering on. It's not the square wave. It's definitely not generating my circuit or coming from my power supply. Switching to a battery doesn't change the output. It doesn't matter if my function generator is on or off. The noise is there as long as the coax is connected to the board. And the coax shouldn't be picking up EMI. Time to start tracking down this noise source using my ground lead on my scope and connecting it to the tip of the probe to create a nice near field EMI probe. It looks like it's coming from my function generator. 
The outputs have the same signal I'm seeing on the board and touching the scope probe to BNC ground, I can clearly see the noise, but it's also strong enough to radiate as well. This normally wouldn't be such an issue for measurements, but we're building a differential probe here. It outputs the difference between the two inputs, so noise on the ground will be output as a difference. I only have these rather large ferrites, and while they do help, they're not completely squashing the noise in the coax shield. Why can't testing just be as easy as designing a circuit in Altium Designer? Ooh, I have a great idea. I actually have another function generator, one I always forget about. My scope has a built-in generator. It's not as fast, nor are the edges as sharp as the standalone, but maybe it's less noisy. Would you look at that? No more spurious noise. The video edit doesn't show this, but I spent days trying to track down an issue on my board that just doesn't exist. I'm going to have to start testing in an anechoic chamber with every board in a Faraday cage after this project. One bonus of this experience is that I have definitely proved the differential part of the amplifier. The function generator's ground is not treated as ground, and the output is not treated as a single-ended input. We're definitely seeing the difference between the two inputs. I'm adjusting the time skew of the scope channels to account for the delay added by the op amps. Now I can use the border plot function in my scope to check the response of the probe. I'm connecting the probe to channel one and the input to the probe to channel three. My scope's function generator is limited to 25 megahertz, so I can only test the first 10% of the probe's range. However, that is sufficient for my current planned usage of the probe. It looks like a pretty flat line to me. Certainly not something to complain about. I just hope that line continues along the same fashion beyond this frequency. Well, I could keep swapping capacitors on the board to get the perfect response. Modify the front end, perhaps to be a 50 to 1 input rather than 500 to 1. However, for now, this project seems like it will do what I need. The design files are on GitHub, linked in the description below, and released under the open source MIT license. Feel free to download them, improve the design, submit a pull request with your changes. I'd love to see what you come up with. If you enjoyed the video, which I'm hoping you did since you made it this far, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to Altium Academy for more great projects and electronics content.